Hey kiddos, let's talk, um, let's do our part two of our mass spectrometry. Um, in the last video we talked a little bit about how the principles of how mass spec works, how the path gets deflected and how inertia separates. Um, in our case, in this case that we're talking about, our isotopes by their masses. Remember, it doesn't have to be isotopes, it could be particles that it breaks up into, it could be different compounds, all of those sorts of things. Mass spec, one of those variety of different tools that we would use. So today we're going to talk about um, where, why this is useful to us um, in particularly say in college chem, in chem one type of stuff. Well, because if you remember, if you look at the periodic table and you looked at a box for a particular element, we're gonna use chlorine for our example. You've got a couple of numbers here. So you've got um, your atomic number, okay? Remember atomic numbers, how many protons does it have? And then obviously you've got the symbol for the element and then you've got atomic weight or molar mass, we might say. Um, and remember that most of the time you get this really weird thing and you're like, how, how does that work? How do we get a mass of like 35.45? Well, the way that you get that is because there's isotopes, right? Because there are different weights um, of the atoms that make up a sample of chlorine. Um, and so some of them have more neutrons than others, and so that's going to give us here. Mass spec kicks out those answers for us and gives us that. So we're going to look real quick at a, at a, at, at a simulated um, signal intensity graph that we would get, get out of the mass spec from the detector. And then we're going to use that to do the simple calculations that we might need to do. So looking over here at our graph, and remember we sort of briefly talked about this in the last video. On our y-axis, we're going to get our signal intensity. On the x-axis, we get a mass-to-charge ratio. And so in the case of chlorine, um, when, if we got this sample out, what we would probably get is something like we'd get like a little baseline here, and then around the 35 point, we'd get a really high peak. Then there'd be like a little baseline here. And then at 37, we'd get a peak that was, I don't know, about a third of the size of the other one. Okay, and if we wanted to put some specific numbers to that, what we would actually have, and let me grab the specific numbers because I wrote them down, is we'd get 75.78, 24.22. That signal intensity, okay, so the intensity here, you can see is a little over three times what it would be for the 37. So what does that mean? Well, it means that I've got, um, in this case, I've got a CL35 isotope. Okay, and in this case, I've got a Cl37 isotope. And now, these are not exact numbers, okay? They don't come out to be quite that even. In fact, um, if we wanted to have the exact numbers here, I did write those down again. So this one technically would be 34.969, if I'm reading my notes right. And the mass of this one would be 36.966. That's not that terribly important, but you'll see why I've got that there um, when we start to do the numbers here in a minute. So that means that this isotope, I've got it at about a third of the abundance of this isotope. The peaks are going to be high, different heights re relative to each other. And that's why we would, when we're doing the calculations for this, and you may have done some of these already, um, we would worry about the relative abundance. In other words, what's their abundance relative to each other? Okay, so that's what the graph would look like coming out of the mass spec. I'm going to erase most of the graph and stuff, and then we're going to talk about um, the calculations. Like, what does that look like in terms of the calculations? What, what does all this mean? Remember that, essentially, like in reality, these would be percents right here, that about 75.78% of it was the, the 35 isotope, about 24.22% of it was the 37 isotope. We're going to use that to essentially come back to this number here, which is the atomic weight that we would be looking for. Okay, so let's talk about the math. So these numbers, these should not look unfamiliar. I pulled these straight off the graph. This is the actual mass, okay? So a chlorine 35 isotope actually has a mass here. A chlorine 37 isotope actually has a mass of this. We're gonna multiply them by their relative abundance. So I took that percent that we had kicked out of the mass spec machine, moved the decimal two places, and gave it its relative abundance. Why is it relative abundance? Essentially, it's saying, what part out of one is it instead of what part out of 100 is it, which is the percent. So how do I get back to this atomic weight number? Well, the way that I get back to that 
is that I take the masses, okay? So if I've got a sample of chlorine, it's got both of these in it. Uh, and then I, so I take the mass of each part and I multiply it by, well, what weight is it given? Well, this is not what weight is in mass, but what like percent weight, what amount of the total is that mass? So this is the amount out of the total for this mass. This is the amount out of the total for this mass. We're to multiply those together. We're gonna get these two numbers here. Sorry, I already had them calculated out. So we've got 26.4995 and we've got 8.953. And so if we take those two numbers then and add them together, we're gonna get 35.45, which you will note is the atomic weight that we would see on the periodic table. This, by the way, is gonna be true essentially for everything on the periodic table. How do they figure out these weights that are on the periodic table? Well, they run stuff through a mass spec. They get, they, they get the individual masses of each thing from the mass to charge ratio. They get their abundance by the height of the peaks there on the mass spec. And then they do the math, add them out, get the final atomic weight. Okay, so that's how that's essentially how mass spec allows us to tie something into a real world thing, which is we need this atomic weight because we need the molar masses to do all of the other bunch of calculations that we're going to end up doing in chemistry. All right. Thanks, kiddos.